Singer-songwriters are going to particularly love this next feature I'm going to show you, which is the Arranger track, and with it, you can define regions of your project to denote the chorus, verse, bridge, solo sections, and so forth of your project, even before you do any recording, and it can also help you determine which song order you want to use. In other words, do you want the verse to play once or twice, or do you want the choruses to start the project rather than a verse? So let me show you how to use the arranger track, and before I do, I've done some pretty exotic changes to the time signature and the tempo of this project. And instead, I'm going to go back in history, which is right here under the edit pull-down menu, and I could either hit the undo key a whole bunch of times to undo back to a previous point in history, or I can go to the history, and here we have a window with all of the different edits that I've done to this project since I opened it. And what I want to do is get back to a point in history where I wasn't adjusting any of the tempo settings. So what I'm going to do is come here and find early in the project, I hit the record feature right here, and then I started setting tempos right here. So I want to keep the record settings, so I'm just going to move this little orange line down to below that recording setting, and now all the tempo changes and the addition of all those other tracks is undone. Now the next time I execute a function, I'm not going to be able to go forward in history. So the next thing I do is going to erase this other history in favor of the new stuff. And that's just fine. That's the way the history works. And I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but that history feature is such a nice thing because you can actually go back and see where you did something and go back in history with it. So I'm going to close that window, and now I'm just back to my somewhat empty Cubase project. So to talk about the Arranger track, let's go ahead and add one to our project. So I'm going to click on the little Add Track button right there, and I'm going to add an Arranger track. And it looks just like any other track inside of the track column, but what I'm going to do is move it to the very, very top of the track list right here. That will keep it at the very top of the event display as well. And now I'm going to define some regions in my project on the Arranger track that will denote the chorus, verse, bridge, and so forth of the project. And I'm going to zoom out here a bit by typing G on my computer keyboard. And now I'm going to make sure that on my toolbar here I have the Draw tool selected. And let's say that my project is going to start with two four-bar intros. Well, I could make one eight-bar intro, but instead I'm going to make two four-bar intros. So I'm going to click and drag with the Snap On set to Bar so that when I click and drag across here on that arranger track, it's going to make a perfectly sized four bar block. And you'll notice that when you lift off of the mouse, it automatically gives that region a name of A. But I like to name these little blocks what they actually denote. So in this case, it's going to be the first of two intros. So I'm going to come over to my info line right here, and if you can't see your info line, then click on the window layout button right here. Make sure that the info line is checked on. That will allow you to come over and change the name of these regions. So I'm going to call this I 1.1. In my terminology, an I is an intro, and 1.1 means one of one. Then I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to draw in a new region on the arrange track, and this is going to be my second part of the intro. So it's going to call this section A again, but I'm going to change the name over here. This is going to be I 1.2, so that's the second part of my intro. Then I'm going to do an 8-bar verse and an 8-bar chorus. So I'm going to come over here to measure 9. I'm going to click and drag until I get 8 measures across here, and you'll notice that next to that draw tool, it's showing me the length and the position of where I have that tool right now, which is on measure 17, and the length of this segment currently is 8 bars long. So now when I lift off, it draws in a new segment. I'm going to come over here and call this V1.1, because this is going to be the first verse, and I might have two verses there, I'm not quite sure yet. Then I'm going to use my scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll over here to measure 17 and draw in another 8 bar segment, and I'm going to call this C 1.1, so the first chorus. So now if I type my G key a few times so that I can see more of the event display, I can now see different segments of the song and relate that to an arrangement that I'm working on. So not only do I see where I am in a project, but there's also another really great feature of those arranger parts, and that is the place command. Let me show you how this works. 
I'm going to come up here to my toolbar and select the object selection tool, which is my standard tool. And then when I click on one of these segments on the arranger and type the P key on my computer keyboard, watch what happens. Boom, my left and right locators go right around that region. So that's another way to move the left and right locators. And if you map out the arrangement of your project first, it's going to make the recording process a lot easier because you're going to be able to place the left and right locator very quickly. So if I wanted to work on the intro, the first part of the intro, I would make that selection of that event on the arranger track and type P and it moves my left and right locators right around the regions of that block. But let me show you another extremely powerful component of the arranger track and that is if you don't know what arrangement you want to use yet, you can use the arranger to change the order of those blocks automatically and listen to the result. And to do that, I'm going to make just a few one bar regions because that'll just make it a lot easier to show you how this works. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and I'm going to right or control click in my event display so that I get that same toolbar and I'm going to grab the draw tool again and I'm just going to make an A, B, and C segment right here between measures 28 through 29. And then I'm going to come over here to the inspector and since I have the arranger track selected, I can now change the chain of those events. So if I wanted the A section to play first, I can click and drag A up here. If I wanted B to play twice, then I'd grab B here and type in two repeats. And then I could grab C and have that play twice as well. And now if I wanted to play that arrangement, then I would turn on the arranger track with this little button on the track itself. You'll notice that the cursor goes right to measure 27. And when I press play on my project, watch what happens. It'll play A, then it'll play B, then it'll play B again, then it'll play C the first time, then the second time, and then stop. So those A, B, and C sections could be intro, verses, and choruses, and so forth. And if I like that arrangement, but I want to try even another arrangement, I can come over and create a new chain. So let's create a new chain. And this time, let's say that we wanted B to play, then C twice, then the A section twice, and since we still have our arranger track active and it's set to the arranger chain number two, now when I start playback, you'll notice that the cursor has gone right to measure 28. So I'm going to hit the enter key for play. It's going to play the B section once, then it's going to go to C and play the C section twice, go to the A section and play that twice and stop. So using the arranger track allows you to record a verse, intro, chorus, and the other components of your project then have those sections play in different orders so you can tell which arrangement of those different components of your song sound really good together. So the arranger track can do that for you as well as helping you see where you are in a project. So it's a great tool to use even before you've recorded any parts in your project. And so now that we know more about the recording basics, in the next section we'll actually do some recording with MIDI and instrument tracks.